plastics are one of the most important products resulting from petrochemical processes, utilizing the world's oil supply in producing these non-biodegradable polymers. However, this production seems bleak in the long run, as by the year 2060, oil and gas will have already been depleted with the current consumption rate according to Ecotricity in 2019. In addition to this, plastics bring upon detrimental effects onto the environment and wildlife, such as the contamination of wide ranges of freshwater and water habitats with small polymer fragments, as plastic waste also contributes about 88% in diarrhea-related cases, 100 for cholera, and 100 for hemantiasis, according to the World Health Organization in 2006. And although recycling is highly encouraged, only about 9% of the plastic we use actually gets recycled according to National Geographic in 2019, which means 79% of the plastic produced ends up in landfills and millions of metric tons of it goes to oceans. These plastic bags take about 400 to 1,000 years to degrade, which harms wildlife and worsens the carbon cycle. This became the researcher's motivation to create a biodegradable plastic made from renewable and commonly unused materials that will have identical strengths but degrade significantly faster than commercially produced plastic. This would not only lessen the negative effects of plastic in our environment but also aid with the inconveniences brought upon by the banning of single-use plastic. A diagram shows the framework of the study. The researchers gathered the necessary materials, specifically the giant styrofoam, vinegar, cervical, and water. These materials are the independent variables in which each measurement will be recalibrated to attain the best quality of the bioplastic in terms of the tensile strength and the biodegradability, which are the dependent variables. The statement of the problem. This study aims to determine if giant taro alocasia mycorrhizas, corn starch along with other materials, be able to produce a bioplastics intended for industrial and commercial uses. Specifically, it aims to answer the following questions. First, the amount of starch extracted from 205 and grams of giant taro corn. Second, identify the tensile strength of commercially produced bioplastics and giant taro based bioplastics and measure the significant differences. And lastly, to determine the biodegradability of the commercially produced of bioplastics and the giant taro based bioplastics. The significance of the study is the result of the study will be very beneficial to both the community and the environment. And listening the amount of plastic that we can use, produce, and enter. And listening the negative impact of plastic our planet and also this study will be beneficial to the commercial store and retailers to aid with the convenience growth upon by the ban of single-use plastic the experimentation was done in two separate phases mainly the extraction of starch and the production of the bioplastic extraction of starch was done as follows collection washing chopping and blending of the giant taro core after which, the giant taro corn slush was seeded through a gauze pad and was then allowed to settle in separate beakers. And after the solutions have settled, water was decanted off from the solution, after which, water was added again to leave clean white starch at the bottom. After preliminary trials, the researchers got the exact ratio of ingredients in creating the bioplastic. A concentration of 15 grams of starch, 60 ml of water, 5 ml of sorbitol, and 5 ml of vinegar were put into a 500 ml beaker and was mixed thoroughly using a steering rod. The mixture was then heat heated up for 8 minutes after attaining a paste-like mixture. The mixture was put onto an oil-covered tray where it was allowed to air dry for 72 to 96 hours. The following findings are obtained based on the analysis and interpretation of data. First, starch yield of the giant taro forms were closely similar as the average percent yield from the three trials of 200 grams of giant taro corn was 2.05%, while the average of the three trials of the 500 grams of giant taro corn was 2.08%. Secondly, the giant taro-based bioplastic 
had a slightly higher tensile strength of 0.66 MPa than compared to the commercially produced bioplastics tensile strength at 0.62 MPa. Next, a significance of 0.148 indicated that the tensile strengths of the commercially produced bioplastics and Giantaro-based bioplastics are similar and had no significant difference. Lastly, the Giantaro-based bioplastic completely degraded in the 350 grams of vermicompost in 7 days, while the commercially produced bioplastic did not break down at all. Based on the findings, this conclusion were made. First, starch shield from Giantaro form and different weight were similar and almost identical. Second, the giant taro based by plastic had slightly greater average tensile strength than commercially produced bioplastic. This means that giant taro based by plastic can be used to replace commercially produced bioplastic. And lastly, the giant taro based by plastic completely degrade over a span of seven days, while commercially produced by plastic did not. This means that giant taro based by plastic can be used to replace the commercially produced by plastic. The following are recommendations made by researchers in how to improve the study. First, to use a different type of acids such as pure acetic acid. Second, to use a different pesticizer such as glycerin and polyethylene glycol. Third, to use a different materials as a source of starch such as breadfruit and finally to test the bioplastics other properties such as water holding capacity and temperature